Radio Moscow World Service. On Tuesday, the opening day of the 27th Congress of the Soviet Communist Party, the General Secretary, Mikhail Gorbachev, delivered a political report. The American Communist Party leader, Gus Hall, shares his impressions with Alexander Barabetic. Comrade Hall, perhaps a few words about how it all started, your impressions of the opening ceremony at the Congress. Well, it's obviously a historic Congress, and I think the report of Comrade Gorbachev measures up to that uh, level of, of uh, history. And because it's not just a report, you know, that uh, reports what's happening, but it was a report in depth. It analyzed uh, problems very deeply, and, and there are many features to it that will stand out uh, for a long, long, long time. First of all, it was a uh, challenge uh, to the war makers of the world, and because he answered uh, the Reagan administration's latest so-called answer to the Soviet proposals, it is very timely, and, and he proved that Reagan's answers were not answers at all. So in that sense, it was a very timely uh, report in the struggle for, um, for peace. I think it was a further and a continuation of the uh, proposals that the Soviet Union has been making on questions of uh, ending the nuclear arms race, on the question of moratorium on uh, testing, and so on. I think he elaborated on that and, uh, and in a sense kind of placed the question that, that there really is no other option, that the only real option from the nuclear arms race is to end it, and that the concrete proposals that the Soviet Union has given are is the method that the race can be uh, ended. So in that sense, he went further and proved that it's the only option available for the, the um, a world. I think there are many things about uh, the word quality comes to mind when uh, you think about the report, in the sense that he uh, spoke about uh, new quality uh, first of all, in production in the Soviet Union, new quality of life, new quality in the approach to work, new quality in leadership, and, and on and on, the question of quality comes to mind, new quality, and, and, and a sense, also a theme that I think kind of runs through it, and that is that there will be no excuses. All excuses have come to an end, and, and that kind of is the spirit of the whole the, a, a, a report. There are a number of things he said about socialism that I thought also were uh, interesting. For instance, the way that he placed the question that socialism is a realistic option open for all people of the world. I think that's a very, you know, correct and an interesting way to place it. That it's an option that's open for everybody and, uh, and therefore it's offered as a solution to the problems that the people they, uh, they, uh, they face. Also on socialism, I think his emphasis and I think correctly so, when he said that the world does not see socialism anymore as an error of history, that it's, it's not a, an error and that it's a legitimate and a natural and a logical dialectical development from, uh, from the world process. And again, he dealt, in my opinion, very realistically about uh, socialism and so on. Also, I thought the phrase that he used, that the world is full of hope and danger, and that these two things, hope and uh, danger, intermingle in the world. And I think that also is uh, correct and applies very much to the problems in the, uh, in the United States. Now, I, I thought it was an excellent uh, report, and it's the kind of report that you have to study because it had a certain depth to it on all questions, and that he, uh, you know, it, in fact, it's a kind of a textbook textbook on politics, textbook on st ideological struggles, textbooks on diplomacy, and textbook on building socialism, and that it has all these qualities, and therefore I think it was a very exceptional report. Comrade Gorbachev dwelt at length on the present state of Soviet-American relations, this pivotal point of the present world, and in this connection she spoke about the way to reduce tension between the two states, and, uh, of course, uh, the main obstacle on the way remains the militarization of outer space. How do you re regard the plans to implement the Star Wars program by Washington? Yes, I think he dealt with these relationships very well, I think both tactically and realistically. In a sense, he was very critical about the fact that the Reagan administration has not responded to the proposals, and, and including this last letter from Reagan, which obviously just came a, a day or so ago, but on the other hand, he spoke in a way that the, that the situation is open, 
and encourage the administration, Reagan administration to uh, come to it. I think in a way he spoke about the Star Wars is also correct that the Star Wars is not really what Reagan said it is. It's not a shield against uh, nuclear a missile. It is a shield, but it's a shield to cover up the research and the development of sophisticated, miniaturized nuclear weapons for outer space. And in that sense, it uh, remains a very dangerous thing. And that unless there is some, uh, some give by the Reagan administration on this question, that there, there will be very little room for negotiations on the other um, a, a question, and that that remains really the main obstacle to a nuclear peace is for the Reagan administration to give up this development of new nuclear sophisticated miniaturized weapons for outer space. And that remains a key to the relationship between our two countries. And what happened was that the American people developed high expectations that the summit process will continue. And, and as long as those expectations are there, they will continue to be pressure on the Reagan administration to make concessions and to move on some concrete questions to put an end to this uh, crazy nuclear arms race. The General Secretary of the Communist Party of the United States, Gus Hall, sharing his impressions of the political report delivered by Mikhail Gorbachev to the 27th Soviet Communist Party Congress with Alexander Barabaychik. <laughs> 